According? We are according. <laughs> Hello, this is Melissa. And this is Kat. If you join our Patreon, we have our Harry Potter episodes going up. One of them is already live. It is hilarious. It's the funniest episode I think we've ever done, and that's not even because I want you guys to join Patreon. It's genuinely my favorite episode we've done so far. Yes. So $5 a month, you support us. We give you bonus content. We're going to start doing more bonus episodes of non-Disney movies. So yeah, the link is in our show notes. Mercury's in retrograde, and I'm feeling it. (laughs) It's been a really rough two weeks for me. Thanks for the news. (laughs) I've had a beautiful last two weeks. Yeah, you're doing good. I think I'm just, you know, I thrive on chaos, so I'm good. I don't. It gives me, (laughs) I already have anxiety, and it just, like, adds to my anxiety. I've never felt anxious in my life. I think you just have all of it. You have my anxiety and your anxiety. I think that's the problem. (laughs) What (laughs) is anxious? (laughs) Let me tell you, I woke up nauseous this morning for my anxiety. That's where I'm at. (laughs) Sounds fun. It's great. so this week we're here to tell you why the emperor's new groove is tragical it is not (laughs) so he's so good just kidding yeah on the tragic to magical scale it's pretty magical it was definitely ahead of its time i think it was it came out in what 2000 Mm -hmm. and this was our uh patron katie's pick yay katie Katie. Katie. It's a good pick. It's a great pick, Katie. Thank you. We stand this movie. Thanks, girl. And I have some fun facts. I thought this one was really funny. And I sometimes when I do these fun facts, I wish I found them before the movie so I could see the things that I'm like reading about. We're so organized. I know. I can't even stand it. So then this one is when... Pieces of the bridge fall into the river that Pacha and Cusco are on. Four letters of the word dam can be seen falling one by one amongst the individual planks. Okay, Disney. Isn't Just that really funny? Throwing some cuss words in there. I've never noticed, though. Who would? I, someone did. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Oh, no, I want to watch it again. Let's go watch it. Damn. We'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> The makers of this movie originally wanted to get Sting to sing the opening song, but they said that Sting was too old and they needed someone more hip and younger. So they went with um, Sir Tom Jones, who is 11 years older than Sting. (laughs) Like, okay, great choice. Sting did write My Funny Friend and Me, which included a music video from the movie. Interesting. Yeah, they're like, we need someone hip and cool. Let's go with someone older than him. But wait, so Sting wrote the music and then Tom Jones sang it, though? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. They are. Okay. They're both They're both old. Fucking mm-hmm. old. Oh, I guess this came out 20 years ago. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait. The way that just hit me. Oh, n- this movie is 21 years old. I need a moment of silence, please. I have tears in my eyes. I I don't know. I don't the like Emperor's that. The Emperor's New Groove is 20 years old. I don't like that either. Okay, so this fun fact, I kind of knew this. I just really didn't know the extent of it. Um, So this movie is not what it was originally meant to be, like, at all. Apparently Zootopia was about Nick to start off, so... No, like, this movie was completely rewritten in, like, six months. Disney, can you... These poor people working for Walt Disney Pictures. <laughs> so the original movie was completely different, and it was supposed to have six original songs written by Sting. Um, So it was supposed to be an ink and retelling of The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain, but... The movie was 50, over 50% completed. And they did like a test viewing of it and everyone fucking hated it. Like hated it. They said it was horrible. It was boring. There was nothing good about it. So they completely scrapped the movie. They brought in a new director who started redoing it, but he was really slow with it. So they brought in a co-director. Neither of them could agree on anything. They both wrote completely different movies. Like, I mean, like completely different from the original and from each other. So two movies were being made 
after this original one. And they had a deadline because they had merchandising rights with Coca-Cola and McDonald's. So they had to finish the movie by like a literal specific date. One of the movies was closer to being completed and the other movie wasn't. So they went with the movie that was more completed. And that's the one that we have today. Like not because it did better, not because like anyone liked it. It was literally simply because it was one of the three movies that was completed. That is so crazy. Yeah. Isn't that insane? It kind of is like The Prince and the Pauper, though. Kind of, but the original one was supposed to be like that story, but like an ink and retelling of it. Isn't that insane? I want to see all these movies that never happened. Uh, Disney. Hey, Ellen. Ellen, answer the phone. Uh, Send us the movies. Also, Pacha was supposed to be like a scrawny ass little dude in the original one. And guess who it was voiced by? Like they like filmed it and like recorded it and everything. A really skinny guy? Not like really skinny, but Uh, he does do voice acting. Seth Green. No, that's a good choice. Oh my God. Thank you. I don't know. Owen (laughs) Wilson. (laughs) I think that would have been funny. So Pacha was a skinny dude and was voiced by Owen Wilson. Yeah. And then they scrapped Owen Wilson. Eartha Kitt was always Yzma and uh, David Spade was always Kuzco. Okay. And then everyone else got scrapped and completely rewritten. That is so crazy. Like this movie was three different movies at one point. Oh my gosh. Isn't that wild? Yes. And they were like, you know what? You're closer to the deadline, so we're going to go with your movie. And then they just released it. So the other team was just like, all right, fuck me. Yeah, no, the guy was pissed. According to like the notes. Yeah, he was oh my pissed. Gosh. He just left. Yeah. That's insane that that's how like, like you just think that there's like 12 people sitting in a room somewhere making a movie and that's never what's happening. Right. Well, half of them were also working on Fantasia at the same time. So like, you know where their thought process was. It was with Fantasia. It wasn't with this. Fantasia 2000. Yeah. In the dinner scene where Kronk lights a pair of candles, the holder is of a small figure. This was a character from the one of the earlier versions of the movie. He was an advisor to the emperor that was later written out. It's like when they're at the dinner when Yzma's trying to like kill Kuzco. Uh, Yzma and Kronk beat Pacha and Kuzco back to the secret lab by literally falling into a plot hole. This explains when Kronk pulls out the map, admitting by all accounts it doesn't make any sense. Because they fell into a plot hole and it doesn't make sense that they made it back in time. That's amazing. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I thought I liked that one. Yeah. Um, my last one. Three of the animals that Kuzco turns into, a llama, a pear, and a whale, are all seen as toys in the scene when he was a baby. Aww. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Yay. Fun fact. Those are fun. Yay. We always linky link the funny facts in the show notes. Show notes, see? (laughs) (laughs) You were doing a thing there and you stopped. (laughs) I know. I just keep, I sometimes will get like ticks and (laughs) recently adding a Y to everything has been my tick. So I am going going to apologize right now (laughs) because I can't stop doing it. It's so annoying. (laughs) My last tick and kind of I keep doing it still, but I'll say to be honest or honestly, and I say it like way too much. I say it before everything I say and it's extremely annoying and I can't stop. Stop. I say that's fair to anything anyone says to me. I'll be like, that's fair. That's fair. That checks out. (laughs) To be honest, you do do that. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It checks out. I'm so happy we have a podcast. (laughs) So you guys, long ago, somewhere deep in the jungle. (laughs) (laughs) What a good way to start a movie. Right. There is a crying llama. I called him a pathetic crying llama. (laughs) Is definitely a pathetic crying llama. (laughs) We're getting a voiceover about how that llama used to be a powerful emperor, Emperor Kuzco. Mm -hmm. And his story begins (laughs) as a baby. (laughs) A very spoiled baby. He doesn't have any parents. So I wonder what's up with that. Yeah, because at one point Yzma says that she raised him. Yeah, and then in the flashback, it's just a baby with a bunch of advisors, caretakers, nannies. (laughs) Yeah. So R.I.P. Cusco's parents. This (laughs) is a Disney movie. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but then Cusco grows up and he's the emperor of a beautiful kingdom, empire, I suppose. I guess it's an empire, yeah. It's the golden teal for me, really. I really do love the golden teal. Golden teal just look good together. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So Cusco starts his day grooming himself. (laughs) He's a beautiful head of hair. He's got a straight 
bob with shoulder Bangs. length <laughs> shoulder length bob gorgeous <laughs> he has a theme song guy singing a song all about the wonderful things he does while he's ruling the kingdom and how great his emperor skills are and he does his daily emperor duties whilst this man is singing about him <laughs> is he just there for an eight hour day like what's the deal i don't know maybe it's just the when he wakes up he sings the song to like get him going in the morning you okay. know I like can his, see that. His cup of coffee, but it's his song in the morning instead. I don't know if I would like that. I'd probably punch that person in the face. Yeah, it's a little bit aggressive. So Cusco is going around the palace doing his emperor duties, and an old man is in his pathway, and he backs into the old... He, like, moonwalks into the <laughs> he old literally. man. <laughs> He's mad because the old man threw off his groove. Threw off his groove! He can't do that. And so he has a guard throw him out a window. Mind you, this is like a 95-year-old man with a cane, like hunched over, probably three feet tall. He did throw off his groove, though. Throw off his groove. It's not very cool. Mm. So the giant guards uh, that are painted <laughs> half blue and half red and do a little dancey dance. They literally do an Irish river dance. Like, what? We're in Mesoamerica, and they're doing an Irish jig. Also, why are they painted, like, red and blue? I'm not mad at it. Like, if my job was to be half painted all the time, I think it would be pretty cool, but... <laughs> I feel like that takes up most of your day. That's a lot of paint. So after Cusco's dance number with the guards, he goes into part of the palace, and he's to pick a bride. <laughs> this part gets me every time. <laughs> and he hates all of them. Gee, I wonder why, Kat. Why do you think he won't pick a bride? Happy Pride Month. I think he's a flaming homosexual. Maybe he's bisexual, but I get very much super homo vibes from him. And he won't pick a bride, and those ladies were all lovely. Yeah, he was saying really stupid stuff just to, like, not pick them. He yeah. said, oh, I bet you have a nice personality to one of them. Like, maybe she dies. She was beautiful, too. And what? <laughs> so he won't pick a bride. He's just really focused on himself, I think. I guess. And we cut scene to Pacha. Pacha. Who is... I don't know, six, three, 300 pounds, <laughs> wearing a poncho. Dyed green, crocheted, alpaca poncho that his wife made him. It's beautiful. <laughs> he's stunning. He's got his little peasant hat on. <laughs> and he's been summoned by the emperor. So he's walking in to meet with the emperor, and he sees the old man <laughs> hanging from a flag that he's been wrapped up in because he got thrown out of a window. Pacha asks are you okay? And he's like, well, the emperor threw me out a window, but it's fine because I threw off his groove. I really deserved it. And Pacha's like, that's a horrible. The old man is like, beware the groove, <laughs> the groove. <laughs> and it's my favorite part. One of my favorite parts of this movie. That's pretty good. Uh, so then we cut scene and we meet Isma and Kronk. My queen. Uh, More gays. Isma <laughs> cracks me up. She's, She's one of my good. favorite Disney characters of all time. She's so irritating and so weird looking. I love her so much. Yeah, and she's voiced by Eartha Kitt, who is an icon in her own right. So Isma is sitting on Cusco's throne, and she's talking to a peasant, and he's like, oh, I don't have any food for my family. And she's like, that sucks. Maybe don't be a peasant. And she's like taking over Cusco's duties for the day. And then Kronk tries to kill a fly ends up hitting himself in the face so we learn that this is um an idiot and an even bigger idiot <laughs> he's like yo isma why are you taking over my duties again verbatim what are what are we doing here she gets up out of the chair and she's talking to Cusco, and all he's looking at is how wrinkly she is and he's looking at like a piece of like spinach in her teeth and he's like oh no that feels like it's been there a long time <laughs> yikes and he's like roasting her in his head and then he's like ah you're fired goodbye pink slip after Cusco fires Yzma and Kronk, Pacha comes in to speak to the emperor because he's been summoned there. Cusco is just gaslighting him so hard. Mm -hmm. He's telling him how beautiful his village is, how important the past 20 generations of his family have been to the kingdom, and how important their village is. And then he's like, where do you think like the best sunlight is on the top of the hill of your village? Which is where Pacha's house is. Literally. And Potch is like, well, just on the other side of those trees there, that's where you get the most beautiful sunlight. And Cusco 
I was like, great, I'm going to, that's where my pool will go for Cusco-topia. Cusco-topia. Pacha is very confused and is like, what are you talking about? That's where my house is. What am I going to tell the villagers? And Cusco is like, I don't really care what happens to you and your family and the villagers. Like, that's where my summer home is going. (laughs) Tell everyone to move out. Goodbye. What a great emperor. Pacha is removed from the palace and Kuzgo goes on with his day. Yes, yeah, so then we move on to see Isma is smashing statues of Cusco's head with a giant hammer and she comes up with a plan to get rid of Cusco. So her initial plan is that she's going to turn him into a flea and mail the flea to herself and then smash the box that the flea is in. And then she's like, no, you know what? I think it needs to be more direct than that. Why don't we just poison him? Knock him out. Kill him. They decide to eat Cusco. Literally though. So can we talk about Yzma's boobs for a minute? Well, I think there's just one. Okay, sometimes there's one. (laughs) Sometimes there's two. Sometimes one is, like, higher than the other. Sometimes one is lower than the other. Sometimes they're, like, on her belly button. She's scary. I just... Her hips are also literally, like points what is going on with Isma's boobs she's she's definitely not built like a normal human being Uh, is she even human that's the question she's kind of terrifying her skin is yeah purple maybe she really maybe she is a legit sorcerer and she's actually like really old I mean that would make sense that's why she looks like that yeah she's probably like 250 years old and she's just keeping herself alive because she's such a great sorcerer lady I don't know if she's great I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> she made all those cool animal potions. So. That's it. That's all she's done in 250 years is just animal potions. I mean, when you have a specialty, when you're, <laughs> when you're good at something, you, that's what you keep doing. And one poison she keeps losing. <laughs> Yzma and Kronk decide to head to the secret lair. They're going to poison Cusco by adding poison to his cocktail Mm -hmm. at dinner Mm -hmm. so that night Kronk makes a lovely dinner for Yzma and Cusco and himself which is weird because they've been fired but Cusco is like uh no hard feelings about (laughs) getting fired I hope thanks for dinner (laughs) so weird and Kronk makes all of their drinks and he puts the poison in Cusco's beverage but then he forgets that his spinach puffs are in the oven Not the spinach puffs. So Kronk has to run and grab his spinach puffs out of the oven. And when he comes back, he forgets which drink he put the poison in. So he just mixes all the beverages together and he motions to Yzma like, don't, don't drink your drink. (laughs) Don't drink that cocktail. (laughs) They toast to Cusco's long reign and Cusco uh, passes out. Yeah. They think he's dead, but then he wakes up. And he starts turning into a llama. One of my favorite parts in this is when Yzma doesn't drink her poisoned drink, she throws it in the plant, which is a cactus next to her. And then as Cusco is slowly turning into a llama, when it shows Yzma, the cactus is in the shape of a llama. (laughs) Yzma's kind of freaking out. She motions to Kronk to knock Cusco out because he's a llama now. Motions with some broccoli, mind you. She's using broccoli to showcase to Kronk to knock (laughs) Cusco out. They pull the vial out, and it's not the death potion. It's the llama potion. Essence of llama. The label was just folded down in such a way that it looked like a skull, but it was actually a llama. That's awkward. So Yzma tells Kronk to take Cusco out of town and finish the job. So this is my personal favorite part when Kronk has Kuzco in a bag and he's running through the town trying to act like a spy and he comes up with his own theme song (laughs) he's singing the whole time and it's so funny apparently that was ad-libbed by Patrick Warburton and then Disney literally like contracted him to like sign over the rights to his humming That's one of the things that Kat and I, we quote that all the time. All the time. For no reason. It's so much fun. (laughs) So Kronk throws the bag with Cusco into, it's like a little river in the town. And then he looks up and he realizes that there's a waterfall, a very large 900 foot waterfall Uh, (laughs) at the end of this little river. That might not be tall enough, actually. It's literally ridiculous. Like, (laughs) hello? longest drop out of the side of a building. For what? So Kronk starts freaking out and his shoulder angel and shoulder devil pop up and are arguing with each other and they're like 
are you going to do it? Are you going to let him die? No, you can't let him die. And they're arguing with each other. And Kronk just gets more and more confused as the conversation goes on because they're really not helping him at all. And he's like, y'all got to go. I'm going to make my own decision. The shoulder angel and devil disappear and Kronk decides to save Kuzco. So he grabs the bag right before it falls over this 10 bajillion foot drop. And he's walking through the town. He's like, okay, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this bag of llama right now. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Not a bag of llama. <laughs> bag of llama. Then he trips and falls down some stairs. The bag goes falling in front of him, lands on a cart, just happens to be Pacha's cart and... Pacha's heading out of town, disappears, and Kronk is like, well, I hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. <laughs> Guess what, Kronky? It's gonna. It do. So Pacha is sad. He returns to the village that's about to be destroyed, and he goes home to his beautiful family. He's got a lovely pregnant wife. Who I'm obsessed with. And a little boy and a little girl. His wife is my one of my favorite characters like in this whole movie. She's so freaking funny. She is really funny. A legend. Uh, Pacha lies to his wife and says that the emperor wasn't able to see him. He's still going to try to figure out what he can do to not have his village destroyed. Pacha goes to unhitch his llama that he took into town with him. <laughs> unhitch? Do you unhitch the llama? <laughs> do I live on a farm? Absolutely. <laughs> On the cart, the bag opens up and Cusco starts talking and Pacha screams, Demon, Demon Llama! <laughs> One of my favorite parts of this movie. I love this movie so much. It's pretty good. And Cusco starts freaking out and he's like, Demon Llama, where? <laughs> it just makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> so Pacha tries to calm the talking Demon Llama down and he realizes that it's the Emperor because Emperor Lama Cusco <laughs> says, oh, you're that annoying peasant. And he's like, uh, you're the emperor, but you're a llama, bro. And makes him look at his hand and he has a little hoof. <laughs> so Cusco goes over to the water and looks down at his reflection. He's totally freaking out. He's totally a llama. And he thinks Pacha turned him into a llama because he doesn't want his house to get bulldozed for Cusco Topia. Yeah. And then he's like, no, I'm not going to give you that much credit. You're not that smart. Um, I don't think this was your idea at all. <laughs> also, I love that Cusco llama has human Cusco's hair it's just like on the back of his head random as hell like <laughs> it gets me every time it is so good it's just his little bob his shoulder length bob on the back of his long ass neck it is so funny <laughs> like they couldn't just make him a llama they had to give him his human hair obviously <laughs> it's so good with the bangs and everything <laughs> Cusco's the only person on uh, earth that I approve of his bangs. He's the only person that's allowed to have them. Yeah, she bullied me when I had bangs. Bangs, guys, I'm so sorry. Bangs are ugly. Stop getting them. I don't think so. Cusco asks Pacha to take him back to Yzma so she can change him back into a human. And Pacha says he'll do it if he promises to build his summer home somewhere else. Yeah, he's trying to blackmail him. Go, Pacha! Cusco says no, so Pacha lets him go and tells him it's a very dangerous path back to the palace. So good luck, bro. Have fun. So at one point when he's walking through the forest, he walks by a bug that is stuck in a spider web and the bug screams, help me! help me but he's talking like a human so the only animals that can talk like humans are ones that have been changed from humans into animals so there's like a theory that this bug was like once a human and was one of Yzma's experiments with her potions Yzma turned somebody into a fly and the fly got eaten by a spider yeah that's sad because if you think about it like the squirrel like can't talk it like talks like a squirrel and the but fly the bug, was like help me help me because oh, it was a person no Maybe that was her old advisor. <gasps> Maybe. Because they said Kronk was like, she said. She gets a new one every decade. Yeah. So. Oh, no. She turned her old one into a fly. And he got eaten. Oh, worst death ever being eaten by a spider. Am I right? Yeah, I think I would. No, that's not good. <laughs> So Cusco is walking through the jungle trying to get back to the palace and a very nice little squirrel offers him an acorn and Cusco takes the acorn and throws it at the squirrel. He's just mean. He's honestly the worst. Cusco goes to walk away from the squirrel and falls off a cliff and lands in a den of jaguars. 
an animal I know very well. They say it four times before you see them. It's the only reason you knew what they were. <laughs> they literally say the word jaguar. No, I learned it in Zootopia. <laughs> Cause Mr. It's Mr. Manches. Mr. Manches, the dragwire. If you the listen drag to our, wire. If you listen to our outtakes after the outro, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if not, you're fake. Stop listening to all the podcasts. Okay, so uh, Cusco lands in the den of jaguars and the squirrel comes down and pops a balloon to try and wake the jaguars up because they're all sleeping. But the balloon doesn't pop. But of course, Cusco can't help himself and yells, ha, at the squirrel. (laughs) A chase ensues. The jaguars are now running after Cusco. But don't worry, guys, because Pacha swings in on a vine and saves Cusco. But (laughs) they hit a tree branch and then they get wrapped up in the vine around the tree branch. And then the tree branch breaks. And Cusco is complaining the whole time about how Pacha is the worst. He literally says, I hate you at one point. (laughs) He's, He's not very impressed by Pacha's saving skills. So they land in a river and they're headed towards a waterfall. Another one of my favorite lines. Yeah. This this whole part is so funny to me. (laughs) Bring it on. Booyah! (laughs) This whole scene right here feels so 90s to me. First of all, because of the ha. Like, remember when we would be like, not ha. Like, everything in the 90s was just yelling. It was just drawn out. (laughs) Ha. Like, that's all we were doing in the 90s. That was every word spoken sounded like that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the booyah. Oh, my gosh. Can we bring booyah booyah back? I'm going to. I'm going to. So they do fall down the waterfall, but they do make it out alive. Cusco isn't breathing, however. And so Pacha is going to give him mouth to mouth. So he opens up his mouth really wide. Like, have you never given CPR, my dude? You don't need to open it quite that dramatically. (laughs) I'm sure he's never given CPR to a llama. Okay, but it was still really dramatic. Cusco's tongue goes like flying out. <laughs> really dramatic. And right when Pach is about to lean down and give him the breath of life, Guzco wakes up and freaks out thinking Pach is trying to like make out with him. So then he starts gargling mouthwash. I don't know where he got the mouthwash from in the freaking jungle, but <laughs> his gargling mouthwash I thinking think it's just water. <laughs> thinking that Pacha was making out with like, did you think he like made out with you in your sleep? Come on, dude. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Cusco gets out much, Kat. I don't that, think he's well-versed in yeah. CPR training. That's fair. So Pacha is then trying to make a fire to keep them warm through the night. And Cusco spits on it. Then he, like, shakes his fur and gets water all over it. Then he throws Pacha's poncho, that's a tongue twister, on the fire. <laughs> you say it, Melissa. Go. Say no, it. I say re- it. No. Say it. No, I'm okay. Pacha's poncho. Yay, you did it. <laughs> so he keeps putting out the fire. Pacha finally gets a fire going, and Cusco's being a freaking brat, and he's like, well, I'm still going to tear your entire village down and build my shit on top of it, and I'm gonna go sleep over here next to this rock. He falls asleep. He's freezing, and Pacha, being the nice man that he is, takes off his poncho and puts it over Cusco so he doesn't... Freeze to death in his sleep. Cusco looks at him and he's like, oh, I guess this guy isn't like horrible. Feels a little bad. Starting to feel a little bit bad about his his current plans. Back at the palace, Yzma is throwing a really dramatic funeral for Cusco. Throwing a funeral <laughs> like it's a fucking bash. She treats it like a party, all right? No, First she of all, doesn't. there's like the decor is literally like one of her headpieces but like extra extra large with a bunch of like purple and black feathers and then this part was really cool so there's like a giant mural of him but it's not a painting because the Incans didn't paint it's woven so instead of it being a painting that's cool isn't that cool yeah Yzma says he's not gonna get any debtor let's move on yeah nobody (laughs) gave a flying fuck that Cusco died but he was an asshole so Yzma is talking to Kronk and he's being really weird and Mm. Yzma gets him to admit that Cusco is not dead but is definitely still a llama out and about (laughs) in the world. (laughs) Just still a llama. So we cut scene to Pacha and Cusco the next morning chatting awkwardly (laughs) and Cusco decides he'll move Cusco-topia if Pacha takes him back to the palace and they shake hands on it. Yeah, Pacha's like, don't shake unless you really mean it. And Cusco shakes hands on it. (laughs) Wink, wink. wink. (laughs) So Pacha and Cusco are crossing a bridge an hour outside the palace. And Pacha falls into the bridge and catches himself on some vines. Thank goodness for all the vines in this movie. I guess so, yeah. They would have been dead 85 times if it wasn't for vines. Approximately. 
Cusco keeps walking and is like, you can't shake hands if you don't have hands, bucko. He like clips his little hooves. <laughs> and Pacha is like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> verbatim. <You> asshole. <laughs> verbatim. Yeah, verbatim. This is definitely how the movie goes. Direct quote. This children's movie. <laughs> I mean, it says damn in the cliffs right here, so. I guess so. <laughs> Cusco just walks right over Pacha, but then he falls in the bridge, too, and he also gets stuck in the vines. Booyah! <laughs> Booyah, Cusco! <laughs> what? <laughs> so now Pacha and Cusco are literally fist fighting in the vines, <laughs> and the whole bridge gives out. So they get stuck between two cliffs, and they're back to back, and they have to climb the cliff together, walking up the cliff back to back, so that Pacha can grab a rope from the bridge to pull them back up. Cusco gets some scorpions all over him. <laughs> Him, so he freaks out, uh, but Pach is able to grab the rope just in time. But he grabs Kuzco's tail, and Kuzco's head goes into a cave. And then a bunch of bats fly out of the cave and kind of lift them up back on to the cliff where the bridge once was. If that many bats came flying at my face, I I think bats are super cute, but I think I would lose my mind. So the cliff crumbles beneath Pach's feet. And Cusco catches him and throws him back up on the ledge and saves his <gasps> life. What a nice guy. So Pacha's looking at him and he's like, you just saved my life, buddy. And Cusco's like, we're not friends and I'm still going to build my summer home on top of your hill. And Pacha says, well, you did save my life. So I'll take you back to the palace. And Cusco is like, OK, <laughs> great. Yeah, but now instead of it taking an hour, it's going to take four days. Yeah, so they were an hour away, and now they're four days away. Yikes. So we cut to Yzma and Kronk <laughs> trying to find Cusco all over the villages. Yzma, I just love her, her fit, her vibe. She's in like a tent <laughs> on top of Kronk's back. This part it's gets like, me every time. It's like a baby carrier, but for Yzma, who honestly cannot weigh more than 70 pounds. So I'm in the tent, maybe weighs another 30. So Kronk is, he's fine, guys. I think the <laughs> Chair that she's sitting on weighs more than she actually does. So Kronk is carrying Yzma like a baby. They're <laughs> looking for Emperor Cusco. Kronk is talking to a squirrel who doesn't <laughs> like Yzma at all. And the squirrel is complaining about a llama that harassed him a few days ago and some jaguars. <laughs> so Kronk gets the tea from this little squirrel that he saw the llama Cusco, talking llama, the talking demon llama, a few <laughs> days ago. And so they're back on the trail of Emperor Cusco. So they know basically where he is. Mm -hmm. So they head in that direction. Cut scene to Cusco and Pacha, who stop for food at a weird treehouse restaurant in the middle of a jungle. It's supposed to be like, what is that one restaurant with the... The jungle big boy. Big boy, yeah. Cusco and Pacha are about to walk into this restaurant, but there's a sign over the door, ironically, that says no llamas allowed inside. Of all the animals not to allow llamas. Cusco puts on a woman disguise. He's yeah. got some blue eyeshadow, little hat. He's got on Pacha's poncho. Little flower on his neck. Super cute. Cusco and Pacha are pretending that they are on their honeymoon at this restaurant. The waitress could not give two shits about them. Like, she's like, great. They order their food. They get this giant pill bug that they have to suck out its like warm liquid stomach with a straw that just seems so tasty it's disgusting and Cusco almost throws up and he's like i'm gonna go talk to the chef because this is really gross Cusco goes into the kitchen to talk to the chef i don't know who was just walking into kitchens at restaurants i don't think that's allowed Ember Cusco, i guess so so then as Cusco is in the kitchen yzma and kronk show up at the same restaurant and they sit at the table behind Pacha and Pacha overhears them talking about how they tried to murder Cusco. It didn't work and they're looking for the llama now and he starts panicking. Kronk turns around and asks Pacha a question and then he's like, oh, you look really familiar. And Pacha's like, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't I don't know who you are. I've never seen you before in my life. I don't I don't know who you are. Verbatim. Yeah. So Pacha goes to get Cusco out of the kitchen. Cusco is harassing this poor guy working in this kitchen alone. There's this whole thing where Yzma also comes into the kitchen to talk to the chef while Cusco is exiting the kitchen and they're both coming in and out at the same time. Pacha's hiding in different areas around the kitchen so that Yzma doesn't see him. Kronk is now cooking because the chef quit. Yeah, I, chef was over it. Chef leaves and everyone is a mess. It, literally everyone is everywhere. And finally, Pacha gets Cusco outside of the restaurant without Yzma and Kronk seeing them. And he's trying to explain to Cusco, hey, 
Uh, your advisor is in there with her little henchman. They're talking about trying to kill you. And he's like, no, they're the ones that are going to save me. I don't know what you're talking about. Literally tells Pacha essentially to fuck off and goes to talk to Yzma and Kronk. And then who's go over here is Yzma and Kronk talking about how they were trying to kill him. So guess who was right the whole time? Pacha. Amazing. He's been right since the beginning of this movie. What are you doing here, Kuzco? So now Kuzco is all alone in the jungle. Pacha's headed home and Kronk and Yzma are camped out that night. Yzma in her tent and Kronk (laughs) in a sleeping bag on the floor. With a tiny, very, very tiny tent over his knees. He's very cute. (laughs) Kronk is laying in his sleeping bag and he wakes up because he remembers how he recognizes Pacha. That's the guy who Emperor Kuzco in the bag landed on his cart. So he must be with him. The bag o llama. So we cut scene to Cusco. He's trying to eat grass, accepting <laughs> his life as a llama. <laughs> Surrounded by other actual llamas. <laughs> and Cusco hears Pacha talking to the llamas about his pal Cusco and how he's not that bad of a guy and how he's going to find him and help him get back to the palace. And Cusco runs over and starts crying and thanking Pacha for coming back for him. And Pacha's like, all right, enough of this sappy stuff. We got to get you back to the palace. Mm-hmm. So Pacha and Cusco are going to stop at Pacha's house for supplies. When they're headed towards the house, some of the villagers let Pacha know, like, oh, we saw your relatives, quote unquote, heading up to your house. So Cusco and Pacha realize it's probably Kronk and Yzma trying to find them. Back at the house, Pacha's wife is entertaining Kronk and Yzma, (laughs) his fake relatives, and Pacha secretly talks to his wife and the kids, and the wife agrees to stall Kronk and Yzma so Cusco and Pacha can get a head start. So the chase back to the palace begins. Obviously, Cusco and Pacha make it there first since they had a head start, and they go to the secret lab. But by the time they get to the secret lab, somehow Yzma and Kronk have beat them there. Because of the plot hole that they fell into. Yes, so as Yzma and Kronk are headed over the ditch where they broke the bridge... A random thunderstorm hits them and they fall into the water and somehow make it to the lab before Pacha and Cusco. So since Yzma and Kronk beat Cusco and Pacha, Yzma already has the human potion. And then Yzma pulls up her dress and Cusco and Pacha scream because they're going to see her crusty old leg. But she's actually (laughs) just, it's pretty good. Yzma's crusty old leg. (laughs) It's like 507 years old. (laughs) It's deteriorating. Her skin's really purple. Oh, my God. You know how, like, bony her, like, hips are? Imagine her knees. Scary. I don't have to. I saw them when she (laughs) hiked her dress up. So she actually just pulls a very large knife that is literally the size of her entire body off of her leg, throws the knife to Kronk so he can kill Kuzco, and then Kronk's angel and devil pop up on his shoulder and are arguing again. Yzma's like, I don't know why I trusted you to be able to do this. You're just a freaking idiot. And by the way, I never liked your spinach puffs. Oh! Nope, that's the end of it. That's it. Kronk is like, nope, not helping you anymore. Are you kidding me? The spinach puffs. I love spinach puffs. They're so good. Should we make spinach puffs? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then Yzma pulls a lever to drop Kronk, and so he disappears. And then Yzma throws all of the animal vials onto the floor so that they can't find the human one. Calls in the guards. Pacha and Kuzco throw some vials at the guards and they all turn into different animals. (laughs) One of the animals turns into a cow. So he says... I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home now? <laughs> that part gets me so Which good. I have said to every boss I've ever had in my entire life, probably 43 times. <laughs> like when I'm having a bad day, I'll be like, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go <laughs> home now? And guess what, guys? They never send me home. It's very disrespectful. They also probably don't get it, which is disrespectful. Some of my bosses have gotten it. Some That's of them good. have. N- I've also worked at Disney a lot of my life. So That's fair. That's fair. Most of my bosses have been privy to this movie, luckily. Very true. Pacha ends up grabbing all the vials off of the ground in his little poncho, and him and Cusco make a run for it. Um, as they're running, Cusco keeps taking different potions. He turns into a turtle. He turns into a tiny little parrot bird. He turns into a whale. Finally, back into a llama again, where he's like, "Yeah, I'm a llama again." And then he's like, "Wait, I don't, I don't want to be a llama. <laughs> want to be a llama? <laughs> don't want to be a llama." Uh, so there ends up only being two vials left, and Isma 
grabs one and ends up taking it and she becomes a kitten. And at this point, they're on the side of a building. Yeah, I think it's like the side of the palace where there's just like a bunch of like carvings in the wall. Yeah, it's like a Incan city. So yeah. there's a lot of texture. Yeah, it's really cool looking, it's honestly. It's beautiful, yeah. So Kitty Yzma... <laughs> Kitty Yzma. <laughs> ...attacks Kuzco because he's holding the final vial, which has to be the human one, of course. It falls, and then Yzma grabs the vial. She can't open it, though, because she's a freaking cat. She doesn't have opposable thumbs. With her tiny little cat paws. Her little teeth! <laughs> uh, so then she gets mad that she can't open it, throws it, jumps after it, falls off the ledge of the side of this building. They're very high up. Remember the 10 bajillion foot waterfall? That's on the side of where they are. So Kuzco and Pacha jump after the vial. Kuzco then has to choose between saving Pacha, who's dangling from the side of the building, or the vial, which is dangling from another part of the building. And then Kuzco decides to save Pacha because he's a nice guy. Yay! Yzma gets the vial and she's about to drink it, but Kronk opens a door and hits her and Kuzco gets the potion. Yay! Bottoms up! We cut scene to Kuzco, who is now a human being. Woo woo! And he apologizes to the old man that he threw out the window because he threw off his groove. Mm -hmm. And he tells Pacha that he'll just take the little hill next to Pacha's, which he definitely can't build Cusco-topia on, but he builds a cute little summer cottage. So they're neighbors. Yay! The theme song guy is singing. Pacha and his wife and his beautiful children are like hanging out in Cusco's pool on his hillside summer house. I don't know if he named this one Cusco-topia. It's not exactly the vision he had in yeah. mind. But. And Kronk has his chipmunk scouts. Teaching them all how to squeak or squeak squeak squeaking. <laughs> and the end. That's the end. end. What a good movie. It's so good. It's a very good I, one. I don't even know where I'm going to put this I one. I don't know Ooh, either. It's going to be hard. Let's see. Would you like to go first? Sure. I gave Emperor's New Groove a 10 out of 10. Oh, okay. And I put it at number seven. So it's underneath Lion King and above Beauty and the Beast. I had it above Lion King and then I really thought about it and I was like, no, I think they're both very, very good for me. But I think I I really have to be in the mood for either one. But I think I'd rather have Lion King stay around than this one. So, okay. Yeah, definitely. Lion King's a classic. Though. It's a good one. Yeah. I gave Emperor's New Groove an 8 out of 10. Ooh. It's definitely very high for me, but it's not. It's mostly because of like the one liners and stuff and it's colorful and it's funny, but it's not one of like favorite movies I watch all the time. It's definitely a really good one, though. I put it at 15. So it's above Ratatouille. Ooh. It was hard. We got to Ratatouille and it was hard. But then I got to Cinderella and I was like, no, no, girl. I love Cindy. But I think I would rather watch Emperor's New Groove than Ratatouille. Me too. <laughs> but <laughs> you hate Ratatouille. That's a no so. shock to anyone. I don't hate it. It's just not great. Uh, all right. We're going to do a patron episode. Woo -woo! So listen up, patrons. Yeah, so if you subscribe to our Patreon, you can tell us your favorite movie or just a movie you really want to hear us talk about. All right, drum roll, please. <gasps> it's Sleeping Beauty. This is Melina's choice. Yay! This is Melissa's favorite princess. Oh my gosh. Sleeping Beauty. We just watched this movie the other day. Yeah. And I was crying. I know you. I just I like Philip and his horse, Samson. I do quite enjoy Prince Philip. Cartoon call me. He's he's one of my favorite like cartoon men. He's wonderful. He's sassy. He's funny. He's cute. Merryweather too. It just gets me. <laughs> Everyone except the main character I like. <laughs> Aurora's hair is so pretty. She's asleep for her whole movie. No, she's not. She's a baby in part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, guys. All of our social medias are linked in the show notes. Yeah, they are. We do Twitter polls and Instagram polls, so definitely join us there. Facebook is a wasteland. Just go like it. Just do it. Maybe someday something fun will happen there. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye. I know no. you. No. Oh. <laughs> you don't know me.
These opinions are our own and are in no way associated with the film or the film's production company. The cover art for Tragical was created by Johnny the Alchemist. The theme song for Tragical was produced by Ja Reezy. Contact info for both artists can be found on their Instagrams, which are linked in the show notes. Thanks for listening to Tragical. Join Harry Potter. Or join, <laughs> join, join Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. <laughs> so the makers of the original movie um, wanted to get sing- Sting. Let me restart that. Start, Start over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Outtake. <laughs> I'm wearing my pride shirt. Do you know who made that? It was Casey and the Bear. Oh, really? Yeah, and one of her other friends. Casey and the Bear, I'm wearing your Orlando Strong coffee cup yeah, she shirt did, like, right now. It was the Hubgrass series. I have the Ariel and Rapunzel little coffee cup. Aw. Aww. Does Ireland even exist at this point? Why are we Irish dancing? I don't understand. I feel like Ireland's always been there, but okay. <laughs> They're like one of the first peoples ever. Well, Mesoamerica <laughs> did not know about Ireland yet. <laughs> oh, man. I'm loving us both like our boob sweat. Just holding my boob sweat. <laughs> always. Me every day. Nobody looks good in bangs to anybody. To you. To anybody. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that meme. <laughs> Guys, stop getting bangs, please. Get the bangs if you want them. <laughs> Matcha's the drag wire. Well, what's his drag name? We got to come up with something good. Oh, we'll come up with it someday. <laughs> Mrs. Matcha's. <laughs> he just changes from Mr. Matcha's to Mrs. Matcha's. Get you a drag wire that can do both, baby. Yeah. So, these are all going to be in the outtakes. <laughs> Booyah. Booyah. No, it sounds dumb. <laughs> I changed my mind already. I like it. I'm sticking with it. Okay. Booyah. Booyah. And we didn't even say the part where Kronk. I said that he got. he got. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. yeah. I was drinking. <laughs> yeah, I said that he got dropped in us. <laughs> Tragical. <laughs>